Brendan, when we last spoke, we thought that the demise of Liz Truss uh, in rather spectacular fashion, defeated by the markets and driven from office after uh, a record lift short period in power, uh, was so dramatic that it was possible, firstly, to say that it was the end of a particular vision of Brexit, namely Singapore on the Thames, which she had obviously been endeavouring to pursue with her uh, agenda uh, and her mini budget. Uh, but we also thought that it might be the beginning of the end of Brexit itself, because the alternative uh, strategy uh, of Fortress England was not really very credible or deliverable. But now we have a new prime minister, we have Rishi Sunak, and he, of course, is the most convinced Brexiteer um, of all, actually, of the past prime ministers. He, he, he campaigned very strongly for Brexit. Uh, Theresa May was, was a Remainer. Liz Truss was a Remainer, although a convert. And, of course, Boris Johnson's commitment to Brexit was very much to do with his own personal interests. So Sunak is, is a convinced Brexiteer. And he does have a vision of Brexit, judging from uh, such remarks as he's made to justify his support for leaving the European Union, that is a globalist one, very much a, a, an Anglosphere one, linked to his uh, Indian identity, his time with India, um, his connections with the United States, with Silicon Valley and all the rest. It, th that is his axis, uh, America and India, uh, not Europe. Does this indicate perhaps that Singapore on Thames is still alive in some way? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's possible that um, Sunak might like to believe that it's still an option, but, but I think uh, there are, are, are two considerations that speak against that. One, uh, I think that the Conservative Party has had um, the hell of a shock um, about what happened to Liz Truss. Uh, I think Liz Truss has done the pro-European, the uh, anti-Brexit cause, a great service in the particular way in which she went about her business, um, presenting um, the most implausible and most extreme view of Brexit, um, which was rightly sanctioned by the markets. Uh, and I think that, that was a great shock to the Conservative Party. And I think that um, Sunak will not be able to ignore this um, change of perception uh, which has happened within his party. Um, what got him the job, it seems to me, was that uh, in the standoff between himself and Liz Truss earlier in the year, um, he was shown to be the one who had right and uh, a realism on his side. Uh, and the, um, the Conservative Party, uh, I think, uh, has understood that uh, too ideological a view of Brexit is one that's uh, unacceptable, not merely to the markets, but actually to many Conservatives and many members of the Conservative Party. Uh, and the second point is that uh, while there's much in Sunak's history that you and I would find unattractive, um, it is true that um, in the middle of this year, he did understand better than trust um, that it wasn't possible simply to wish into being um, enormous rates of growth um, by the simple expedient of, of, of cutting taxes. So that, that argues for me a, a greater intellectual coherence and realism on his part than certainly was um, and characterised the previous two governments. But Johnson wasn't unrealistic, but he was so confused um, and incoherent that no particular view of Brexit could emerge from him. Um, I, I also think that Sunak will be so busy dealing with other economic problems, um, and he won't be there for very long, at most two years, um, I don't really think he's going to be able to impose a view of Brexit, um, either on his party or the country. People who fear the return of um, Trump um, sometimes think that actually uh, what would be far worse would be uh, a more efficient version of Trump. Um, and... Um, one might think that the same could be said of, of uh, Sunak, that he is offering a more efficient uh, form of making a Brexit, um, if, if not credible, at least steady the ship sufficiently to uh, save the Conservative Party some position. Um, I, I don't think the parallel holds up, to be, to, to be honest. Uh, 
when Keir Starmer gets up and says, I can make Brexit work, um, I find that um, fantastic and unbelievable. Um, and I find it just as uh, fantastic and unbelievable when it's said by someone like Sunak. Um, I don't think the Brexit can be made to work. I think that at best there are ways of, of mitigating its damage. And I think a, a great um, legacy of Liz Truss is that she has um, injected into the consciousness of the British people um, the idea that many of the justifications for Brexit, much of the underlying philosophy of Brexit, was distinctly dodgy and, and implausible. Uh, and it may be true that Sunak will try and steady the ship a bit, uh, but I think it's a, 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 a ship um, which is whole, beneath the world, whole now beneath the waterline. Last week, we thought that the touchstone policies that were going to cause difficulties for uh, the Conservative government going forward, uh, whoever became leader, um, would be immigration on the one hand, um, and what happens in Northern Ireland and above all in Scotland, the constitutional issue, the integrity of the United Kingdom. How do you think Sunak is going to handle these two issues? Well, I think there are three issues, really, Scotland, Northern, Northern, Northern Ireland and, and immigration. Um, as far as Northern Ireland is concerned, it, it does seem to me, and it, it's been plausibly reported, um, that earlier in the year, one of the reasons why um, he was uh, urging trust um, uh, to adopt a, a more softly, softly view of Northern Ireland was that he was afraid of the economic consequences of uh, uh, something that was very like a trade war with the European Union. Um, I think that fear will continue. He didn't say anything specific about um, Northern Ireland when he um, uh, has spoken over the past um, uh, 12 or, or 15 hours. Um, I suspect that he'll want to, uh, to have a fudge, want to have um, uh, a less confrontational view of, um, uh, of the Northern Ireland Protocol than even Liz Truss was presenting earlier in the year. Interestingly, she rather changed her mind when she came to power and um, she was, was, I think, looking to compromise. So I, I, I think that probably uh, is going at least to be fudged and may even be re resolved. Um, I think that um, on the, as far as Scotland is concerned, um, there is always pressure within the Conservative Party, and perhaps um, particularly on, on somebody who might be regarded as not being of, of, of a traditional um, English culture, um, to uh, emphasise that um, Scotland is the great beneficiary of the United Kingdom, uh, and uh, it's up to the Scots to understand that. It's up to the government in London to adopt a, a, a rather hegemonic um, uh, or as the Conservative Party would see it, a, a realistic tone in its dealings with Scotland. I'd be surprised if there were any more conciliatory or more uh, understanding approach to, to Scotland from, from Sunak um, than what happened um, uh, earlier in the year under, under Johnson and, and, and Trust. Um, as far as uh, immigration is concerned, um, once again, uh, I think it may well be, it may well be that... Um, Sunak's instincts um, are more towards the, the globally liberalizing um, uh, favoring of, um, uh, of, of migration in general and immigration into this country in particular. Um, but I, I think within the Conservative Party, there'll be so many pressures um, um, tending against that. And he'll have so much else on his plate that I'd be surprised if he um, has any radical um, proposals to make, particularly not going in liberalizing direction. You think that the economic challenge, this need to balance the book, the, the need to uh, probably cut public expenditure quite significantly in order to do so, uh, will be such a restraint that he won't really have time to, to focus on anything broader than that? Yes, I think there's very much the possibility of that. And I think that the Conservative Party over the next six months is going to be blamed for the economic problems in a way that isn't entirely fair. But it's certainly true that by Brexit and by um, Liz Truss's uh, 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 um, absurd mini budget, um, the situation was made a great deal worse. So politics isn't entirely fair, um, but that there, there is an enormous amount of culpability associating with the Conservative Party um, for what it's done this year. 
Um, and um, Sunak um, seemed to recognise that in, in what he had to say outside Downing Street this afternoon. He, he recognised that both, both Johnson in his personal demeanour and Truss in her handling of, um, of the market and the politics of, of her economic policy um, had, created, had created mistakes um, that he said, perhaps optimistically, um, he had been elected to rectify. But this will put tremendous pressure on... Uh the Conservative Party's position in the polls. I mean, it's very, already, uh, they are record low levels. It's very difficult to see going through all these uh, economic challenges of uh, spending cuts are deteriorating, uh, standard of living and the rest, that that position can change. Doesn't this mean that at some point, Sunak is going to find his own position under assault? Well, there was a, a tweet that I saw um, uh, today, um, hard luck on Penny Morton. She'll have to wait till November. Uh, I, don't, I think it won't be November before his um, position comes into jeopardy. But but I, I think you're right that uh, the Conservative Party at the moment is, is damned if it does and damned if it doesn't. Um, Sunak might uh, adopt um, a more fiscally responsible uh, approach, which would need to include, although you didn't mention it, um, rising taxes, uh, because that's another way to balance the books, even yeah. if it's a, an, uh, an uncongenial one to people people like him. Um, and whatever he does, um, the Conservative Party will be much criticised um, for uh, its management of the economy or mismanagement of the economy. Um, I suspect that this time uh, the Conservative Party has not got the energy for a new leader before the next election. Uh, I think if, if Sunak um, is seen to be to be to be failing, that will lead to such demoralisation within the Conservative Party that there will be many people who conclude, let's just have an election rather than carry on in this broken back fashion. So there's no prospect of Boris Johnson trying a further return. Um, I don't think so. Um, Sunak himself was was quite pointed in what he had to say this afternoon um, about needing more in the way of I integrity and coherence in policy. And that was uh, uh, undoubtedly a, a broadside aimed at Johnson. So all that we can really expect is a an attempt to steady the ship without any real initiatives that can be uh, seen to offer a coherent long-term vision of Brexit because everything is going to be spent on short-term firefighting on the economy and endeavouring to get the markets satisfied by a mixture of tax increases and cuts in expenditure, which is likely to precipitate uh, uh, quite a deep recession, potentially, with all that that would imply. I mean, this is a very dark outlook. Um, could it create the circumstances in which the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats acquire the courage to pin some of this on Brexit and start talking about uh, a reversal of Brexit in some form? I think that's in entirely possible. Uh, I deprecate and I'm very disappointed by the, the rhetoric of, um, of Starmer, um, but, but I'm not sure that even uh, in the next general election, he'll be using the same rhetoric about, about Europe, because it seems to me that uh, opinion will have been shifting, uh, as it already is shifting, um, in a way that makes it m much safer to talk uh, positively about the European Union, and perhaps even dangerous not to speak positively about the European Union. Um, you're right that there's a, or in the distinction you imply, between blaming Brexit for the problems of the country and advocating rejoin. They're not the same thing. Um, but in, in fact, uh, uh, the one can very easily slip into the other. Uh, if you accept, uh, as an increasing number of people do, uh, that it's Brexit which has made a, a very substantial contribution to the economic problems of the country, uh, then the, the, the necessary ne ne corollary of that is, is to say, well, how can we reverse that? How can we correct this error? And correcting the error is obviously um, predicated upon rejoining the European Union. 
uh, if there is um, a, a substantial Labour majority at the next election, which I, I now expect, um, it might well be that even in the course of their four or five years of their first administration, uh, they came to the conclusion um, that rejoin perhaps for a referendum in the in the general election, advocated in the general election after the next, um, was the way of of, um, uh, of meeting the desire um, to to rectify the error of Brexit. Finally, I've been very struck by uh, European coverage of uh, continental European coverage of the crisis that uh, we've seen in the Conservative Party over the last um, month. Um, and the way in which they have obviously been pinning the blame for Britain's economic difficulties on Brexit. Would it help the rejoin cause in the UK if we could get from some continental politicians some indication of what the terms might be available for Britain were we to consider rejoining? Is, is that a way of assisting the debate in the UK, which at the moment is, is, is really rather a, a, a blank piece of paper and has too much reference probably to the position that we enjoyed while we were still in the EU, rather than the very different circumstances that we face in trying to rejoin? Uh, I, I think it's premature from both sides of the argument, both for this country uh, and for the European Union to, to envisage anything um, that would have any uh, any detail to it. Uh, I, I think that um, there's a, a way to go in forming British opinion um, and a way to go before yeah, it will be possible for our continental partners to take sufficiently seriously the idea of rejoin um, to be able to give a, a detailed prospectus for doing so. Um, I, I don't think that it, 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 it's right that people in this country are fixated on the way things were in 2016. Um, I, I think that um, uh, it's only a, a, a rather small um, elite minority of, of pro-Europeans who, who are very aware um, of um, what we what we supposedly benefited from by in the way of opt outs, I, I don't think that that was um, to many people in this country uh, the very powerful argument. Uh, we never had, we had our cake and eat it eat eat it. Um, we in, benefited from these opt outs. I, I don't think that was a, an argument that figured very largely in the views of many people on Europe. But you shared a platform at the weekend. Um, there was a rejoin march in in. Uh, London, with uh, several distinguished con uh, your continental politicians who were saying, well, we would welcome Britain back. Is that a signal that at least we could get, uh, we should have more of from the continent? I think there's no harm a, a, at all in that. But, but quite rightly, the particular politicians you're talking about um, avoided detailed uh, uh, proposals. And, and, and that's quite right, because um, one of them was a, a, an MEP, the other of them was a former German, uh, sorry, Belgian uh, prime minister. Um, you would need to have everybody in the European Council, you would need to have the Commission, you'd need to have the European Parliament on board uh, for any specific set of proposals. Um, and uh, as I say, I, I don't think opinion and the arguments are yet ripe enough um, to go down that path. But we have at least got to the situation where the idea that Brexit is done and uh, cannot be reversed. We're beyond that stage now, I think, given the public debate in the UK. Yes, it's more, more than extraordinary that um, uh, opinion polls suggest a very large majority of people now think Brexit was a mistake and depending on which poll you believe, um, a majority might or might not favour favor rejoin. Um, and that's happened without either of the main political parties having any truck um, with such ideas. Uh, there's been very little in the way of um, leadership ag against Brexit um, and in favour of rejoin from either the Labour Party or, or even the Liberal Democrats who uh, are willing enough to say that in principle they, they want to, to join rejoin the European Union. Um, but it's always something which is being postponed to what um, what. Boris Johnson might call the Greek calends, um, uh, the indefinite future. Well, this is certainly something which we are looking at very closely at the Trust. Brendan, thank you very much for, for this. 
Um, and we'll see how this debate continues uh, in the weeks ahead. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I would hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.